In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called interval list intersection. So we're given two lists of closed intervals, uh, first list and second list, where uh, first list at i is equal to start at i and end at i. Basically, we have a start time and the end time. So each interval is pairwise disjoint and in sorted order, so sorted by the start time. Okay, And uh, return the intersection of these two intervals list. A closed interval, which is a b with a less than b, uh, denotes the set of real numbers x with a is less than uh, uh, x is less uh, yeah a is less than or equal to x and x is less than or equal to b. So the intersection of two closed intervals is a set of real numbers that are either empty or represented as a closed interval. For example, the intersection of one three and two four is a two three, right? So we have a intersection of the interval between those two, right? So here you can see we have an example of two intervals, right? So you can see we have two intervals like this, uh, those two intervals, and the intersection of those intervals is gonna be the start time, which is the maximum start time between those two interval and the minimum end time between those two interval, which is this one, right? So you can see that both of those intervals contains this interval. Right? So in this case, that's the intersection of those, those two intervals. It's going to be from here, uh, one second, from here, right, all the way to here. Okay, And that's why you see there's like a little uh, time interval at the bottom. That's the answer that we're going to return. Um, and then here you can see we also have another interval, right, which intersects with this two interval right here. So you can see that this is equal to this. So we're returning the same start time, in this case it's 5, 5, right? And then we also have an intersection between here and here. So it's gonna be A to 10, okay? Uh, in this case, we are just trying to return a list of intersections for those two lists, right? So we return that in a 2D array, right? So array of intervals. And uh, if there's no intersections, right? So there's no overlapping, then we just going to return empty. Uh, or empty list, right? For example, here you can see they're not overlapping with each other. Then we're just going to uh, return, um, sorry, there is there is overlapping, my bad. If there is overlapping, then we're just going to make sure we find the overlapping and return it in a, uh, find the intersection and return it in a list. If there is no overlapping, then we wanna make sure we're returning none, uh, we're pretty much, pretty much return empty list, right? So let's take a look at how we're gonna solve this problem. So first, I'm going to talk about how can we find the intersection first. So to find an intersection, just like I mentioned, we're going to, let's say we have two intervals like this, where they're intersecting with each other, right? So to find the intersection point, it's going to be here and here, right? So it's going to be the start time, is going to be the maximum start time between those two, which is here, and the minimum end time between those two is going to be here, okay? So that's why we have a intersection, which is basically the maximum of the start time between those two, the minimum end time between those two. So it's gonna be those two, right? So we're gonna return, we're gonna save it in a um, array, 2D uh, integer array with size of two. This is the start time, this is the end time. We're gonna add it to our list. And uh, one more example, if we have a no intersection, or I should say no overlapping, then we don't have to um, add them up, right? Um, and uh, let's say we have another example like this where we have something like this, right? We have we have to get the same thing. We have to get a maximum start time, which is here, the minimum end time, which is here. So that's going to be the intersection for those two lists, right? Or I should say those two interval. So now you know how to find the intersection. Now let's take a look at how we can be able to find all the intersections, right? So normally what we're going to do is we're going to compare the overlapping intervals, right? So if there's no overlapping, so for example, this one, what we're going to do is we're going to move the i pointer. So i is going to be the, the upper one. And j is going to be the lower one, or the lower um, interval. Right now, we're just trying to figure out which interval should we compare with. So in this case, for the above two examples, right? Example 1, example 2, you can see there's no overlapping. So if there's no overlapping, we're going to make sure we move a interval that is, um, uh, in this case, is a smaller interval. Right, or it happens before, or the, the interval that happens before, then we want to make sure that we move that interval, or the end time 
is less than this end time, then we want to make sure that we move this interval one to the right, right? So we can compare with the next interval uh, in the first uh, first list, right? And then in this case, if we have an end time, if there's no inter uh, overlapping and the end time is less than the this end time right here, right? Then what we're going to do, let, let's say this is E1, this is E2. If E1 is less uh, bigger than E2 and there's no overlapping, we're just going to move the E2 one to the right so that we can compare the nest interval with this interval right here, right? So nest interval, let's say somewhere, somewhere around here, we want to compare this with this. Okay, so then here, let's say we have overlapping like this. So what we're going to do is we want to make sure we find the intersection, which is here and here. Okay, like I just talked about, right? So now we know there's an overlapping and we want to make sure we find the intersection, save it, add to our list. And then uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to move on. Same thing, same, um, same procedure. So whoever has a smaller end time, whoever will move, um, move the nest, move the pointer one to the right, right? So in this case, this has a smaller end time. So E1 is smaller than E2. Then we're going to move the I pointer, which is the list one pointer, move one to the right. And same thing here. Once we find overlapping, we're going to uh, save those in, uh, in this interval, right? The intersection interval onto our list. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compare to see whoever has the smallest end time. We'll basically uh, like move that pointer one to the right. So in this case, it's J because this E2 has a smaller end time than E1. So we're going to move the J pointer one to the right. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, focus on how can we like define if this is a, um, if there's overlapping, right? Because I can have something like this, or I can have something like this. And uh, we can say that, oh, there's overlapping because in this case, S1, let's, let's call it S2 because this is the lower one. And this is S1, right? In this case, what we can say is this, E1 is bigger than E2, right? If E1 is bigger than E2, there's overlapping. Then what if we have something like, uh, like this? I'm, let me show you an example, right? So let's say we have something like this. This is E1 and this is S2, right? E1 is still bigger than S2. So how can we identify if there's overlapping? Well, a good way, I think in, in my opinion, an easy way to identify if there's overlapping like basically we want to check to see if S2 is between S1 and E1. If it is, there's overlapping, right? So what we can do is we're going to find um, the intersection and so on. And same thing here. If, e, uh, if S1 is between uh, S2 and E2, then we're going to uh, know that there's overlapping. Then we're just going to proceed, get the um, um, intersection interval, right? So now we know how to solve this problem. Let's take a look at how we can do this in code. Um, so first, what we're going to do is we're going to define the list that we're going to return our lamp, that, that we're going to return at the end. So our result list. Once we re return, uh, define our result list, we're going to define, um, in this case, the endpoint, right? So we're going to have the length of the, uh, so M1, which is basically the length of S, uh, first list and uh, basically define n1 and n2, which is the end of uh, the, the length of the uh, second list. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to iterate, right? So while um, the, we're going to define our pointers, right? So we define pointers. So we're going to have our i and j. So i is going to be the pointer for first list and the j is going to be the pointer for the second list. And then while they are less than n1 and n2, we're just going to continue to um, find our, um, our intersection, right? So we can find uh, interval intersection. Okay, so what we're going to do at the end, we, we want to make sure we return the result list. All right, so let's try to define those intersections. So we have a result list which stores a um, integer array. Okay, so then we're going to define our n1, n2. So what we're going to do is we're going to say integer n1, which is equal to first list 
dot length. Dot length. Okay. And then two is equal to second list dot length. All right. And we also have our pointers, which is i is going to equal zero. J is also equal to zero. So i is basically uh, mainly for the pointer for the first list, and the j is going to be the pointer for the second list. Um, and then we also going to say is this. We're going to say while i is less than n1 and j is less than n2, we're going to find the first, uh, we're going to find the interval section, right? So what we're going to do is this. Uh, let's say if there's a situation where we have non-overlapping, right? Just like I mentioned, we're going to move the pointer one to the, the, the i pointer one to the right or the j pointer one to the right. And if there's overlapping, we want to get the intersection. Right, and then we want to move the pointers. So we can move the pointers uh, part last, right? So move the pointers. But first, we want to see if there's uh, intersection. So add intersection, right? If there's an intersection, we add it. So what we're going to do is this. So if, okay, so if first, let's try to define those values. So let's just so you notice that we have S1, S2, E1, E2. Now let's define those. So we have S1, which is equal to uh, first list at I, right, at zero. That's the first the start, start time. Uh, we also have E1, right, which is equal to first list I at one, okay? And we also have S2, which is equal to second list at j, right? Make sure we use j zero, okay. Integer e two, which is equal to second list j at one, okay. And once we have those variables, what we're going to do is we're going to compare. Uh, we want to first see if um, if s two is between s one and e one, okay. So e s one is less than or equal to s two and s2 is less than or equal to e1 that there that means that there's an intersection and we also want to say if or right or if there's a situation where we have s1 is between s2 and e2 so s2 is less than or equal to s1 and s1 is less than or equal to e2 okay so then we're gonna uh you know, in this case, we're just going to find the maximum, right? So in this case, the maximum starts. So the start time is going to be maximum between S1 and S2, right? We just talked about this. We want to find the maximum start time and the minimum end time between those two intervals. So end is equal to the minimum, that minimum, E1 and E2, okay? Once we find those, we're going to put them in a array. So current is equal to uh, S and E, right? And then we're going to add this integer, integer array onto our result list. Okay, so once we add the intersection, we're going to move our pointers, right? So uh, what we're going to do is this. We're going to say if the current and uh, if E2, right, is bigger than E1, right, this is E1, this is E2. If E2 is bigger than E1, we're going to move E E1, right? If E2 is bigger than E1, we're going to move the e I pointer one to the right. So if E2 is bigger than E1, I'm going to move the I pointer one to the right. Otherwise, we can just move the J pointer one to the right. And at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to do that until we find all the interval sections, right? So we basically define those variables, um, and then we're going to check to see if there's intersection we add intersection if there is um and then what we're going to do then is we're going to move our pointers right so if the n if n2 is bigger than n1 then we're going to move the i pointer one to the right if in this case otherwise if we have um n, n1 e, e1 right e1 is this bigger than e2 then we're going to move the j pointer one to the right now at the end we're going to return results but we want to make sure we re return in a 2D array, right? So in this case, it's going to be two array. It's going to be result.size. And then for each interval, we have two slots, start time and the end time. Now let's try to uh, run our code. 
All right, let's try to run with a few more examples. Okay, now let's try to submit our code. And there you go. Uh, this is how we solve the interval section or uh, intersection. So the time complexity in this case is going to be big O of m plus n. m is going to be number of elements or number of intervals we have in first list, and n is going to be number of intervals we have in the second list. So there you have it, and thank you for watching.